Good morning everyone, it's lovely to be back with you. Unfortunately we still can't worship together at St Andrews and our growth. I hope that you are all well and I hope that you are all managing to find ways to creatively spend your time as we find ourselves in lockdown. However this morning we are able to come together and worship God. The God who promises to be with us wherever we are. The God who is in wilderness and in valley. The God who is at the mountain tops and in the good times. So let's come together and let's worship him now. Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 to 15 And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others of their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So, I wonder if any of you have played the game Articulate. It's quite straightforward. You have a series of cards, and on the cards there are a number of different words. For example, it could be a car. So you have to describe that without saying the word 
car. Let's give that a wee try, shall we? It's a fruit, it's yellow, it's a skin that you peel. Well done if you got banana. What about, this is a huge animal with a trunk and tusks. Well done, elephant. What about if you were to think about a fish dish specially associated with our broth? Well done, Smokies. Finding ways of describing things really is important. And so it is when it comes to thinking about how we describe God. Throughout the Bible, there are many ways in which God is described. He is king. He is shepherd. He is provider. He is rock. He is friend. He is saviour. He is master. He is Lord. All of those different ways in which God is described. Today we are going to be thinking about the first statement in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so we're going to be thinking about three words which describe God. Father, Almighty, Creator. What's your experience of having a father? Some of you hear that word and you will be thinking of a wonderful person who has been part of your life, maybe is still part of your life. It's maybe the idea of that person who listened to you, provided for you, cared for you, valued you maybe took you to the football, maybe took you to your clubs or activities. I'm very conscious of the fact that not everybody has that same experience of a father. I, for one, didn't have a good experience of a father. Some of us have had fathers who have been neglectful or absent or abusive. And so when we hear the word father, it is a difficult and painful word. So when we are talking about believing in God the Father, we need to be reminded of the fact that this is a picture, an illustration that speaks of who a good, good father is. Not a human father, but a heavenly father. At the heart of the idea of God as Father is the fact that he is personal and relational. Think of the Father who loves and values you. Listen to what Jesus said. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? You have infinite value to your Father in heaven. Or think of the Father who listens. When the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, he began by teaching them to say, Our Father. And so our Heavenly Father is one who listens, who's always available to listen. No matter where, no matter when, no matter what time, there to listen. Or think about the fact that the Heavenly Father provides. Jesus, speaking in the Sermon of the Mount, declares that even though we are perhaps evil, know how to do good things for our children, how much more so is the Father able to give good gifts? And so we know that God the Father gives to us some amazing gifts. Or think about the Father who forgives, the parable of the prodigal son who goes away spends his whole sum of money, comes back and the father forgives and welcomes, reconciles and has him back at home. Never ever is it impossible for the heavenly father not to love and forgive. And of course, think about the fact that our heavenly father also challenges us and perhaps disciplines us. In Hebrews 12, we discover that. 
that God disciplines us for our own good. So declaring our faith in God the Father reminds us that Christianity is not about religious observance or belief, but it is about a living relationship with a God who is a good, good Father, a loving Heavenly Father. So I want us to take a little bit of time now to reflect on that and to perhaps allow ourselves to encounter that good, good Father. And I'm thankful for Martin and for the worship team for being able to organise this. Let's just sit and listen as they sing Good, Good Father. The second word that we're going to look at this morning to describe God is Almighty. And that word helps remind us of the fact that God is active in the world. 
You see, there are people out there who practice a faith called deism. They believe in a God who created the world, but they believe in a God who is unable to be involved in his creation now. Their view and vision of God is a God who is limited by the laws of chemistry and physics and biology. Their God is unable to intervene in any way, shape or form in the world. He is locked out of the world. Perhaps what we could be able to say is that he is socially distant from the world. He's out there, not able to be involved. As Christians, we profess in a God who is not stuck out there, but rather we believe in a living, active, dynamic God who is very much at work in the world. And we discover that again and again through the stories of the Bible. We think about the God who divided the Red Sea or the God who led his people through the wilderness. We think of the God who brought the walls of Jericho crashing down or the God who helped Daniel to escape the jaws of the lion. The God who was able to do the most impossible thing with Mary. The God who has a track record of healing the sick. And of course, last week, we celebrated the God of resurrection and the empty tomb in that most amazing event. The God who we Christians believe in is not a distant, disengaged God. He is at work in us and among us and through us in the world. Our God is not out there, but he is present with us. This belief in an almighty God is what lies behind our commitment to praying for the world. On how we do that now, we pray for God to intervene at this time of COVID-19 crisis. We pray personally for those we know who have become unwell. Of course, it also means that there's a difficulty because sometimes our prayers are not answered the way that we would want them to be answered. However, the reality is that we know also that God has heard and he has answered prayers in the past. At this time, we believe as Christians that God is active in this world. And so we believe in an almighty God who can do the most impossible things. Finally, we are going to look at the word creator. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Again, there are those out in the world who are what are described as pantheists. Pantheists quite simply believe that everything that exists is God. They don't believe in a distinct or personal God. Rather, all things are God. And that's a belief that we discover within Wiccan and pagan uh, religious beliefs. As Christians though, as much as we celebrate creation, as much as we are in awe of sunrise and sunset, as much as we are amazed by the beauty of mountains and amazed by the diversity of birds and animals and fish, the reality is that we do not worship the created order. We do recognise that all of creation is the fingerprints of God. Psalm 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. So we don't worship creation, but we do care for it. We do appreciate it. As we think about God as creator, it would be very easy to get sucked into the conversation about the relationship between faith and science and perhaps there's another sermon in that or a sermon series in that 
What I want to say today is that believing in God the Creator is really just simply saying that what is around us didn't happen by accident. It wasn't just a chance that chemicals came together at the right temperature at the right point and here we are. What we're saying is that we believe in a God who created and has a plan and a purpose. And actually what we're saying is that you and I are part of God's creation and therefore he made us for a plan and a purpose. None of us are mistakes. None of us are accidents. All of us are part of God's good plan for his creation. So we believe in a God who created and who creates. We believe in a God who has a purpose and a plan for the world of which we are part. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I want us just to take a little moment to think about two or three things that maybe helps us think through what the practicalities of that are. And the first is this, that God is interested in having a relationship with you. And that's made possible through his Son, Jesus Christ. And so perhaps for some of us who are watching this, We've never really thought about it being possible to have a relationship with God as Father. To have that sense of intimacy with him. It might be that some of us are perhaps a bit like the prodigal son at the moment. Maybe some of us have drifted away from the Father. Maybe today is a day when we need to begin our journey back to God the Father. To rekindle the relationship that we once had. But the key thing is... That to be a Christian is to be in relationship with God as Father. And so perhaps as we are in lockdown and we have more time to think, to pray, to maybe read God's word, to perhaps worship on our own, maybe it's an opportunity of just taking time to be in the presence of the Father. The second thing is that when it comes to believing in God as Almighty, maybe we need to be actually asking ourselves just now, what is it that we are to be praying for God to be doing in the world? And one of the things at this moment is to be asking God very clearly to, to lead and to guide those who are scientists and researchers looking for a vaccine and a cure for this COVID-19. And finally, when it comes to creation, to believe in a creator means that we need to look after his creation to care for it, to be wise stewards of it, not to abuse it. And so perhaps it's about recycling. Perhaps it's about actually promoting wise stewardship of our planet. And that's a bit of a challenge just now, because one of the things that's happened as a result of the COVID-19 crisis is the environment of our planet is actually improving. Because there's not as many planes flying. Because there's not as many cars out. And so perhaps at this point, this COVID-19 crisis is maybe actually asking us what would be the right thing for this world moving forwards. What lessons might we be able to learn? So, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I hope that you do as well. Loving Lord, we give you our offerings now. For even in these days, there is so much that we have to be thankful for. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And so we praise you, not just with our lips, but with our whole lives. We give you our hearts. Receive our gifts, we pray, for we offer them all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can trust in your promises. You are the one who calms the storms. You are our anchor, the anchor that we can truly rely on, especially during the storm that's in the world at the moment. Forgive us that we're often like the disciples in the boat with Jesus, full of mistrust and unbelief, leaving Jesus sleeping in our boat, trying to cope with the storm by ourselves. Even ancient mariners knew to rely on their anchor when the wind swept up and the seas became perilous. So help us to seek you in the storm, Lord, for you are our Lord and Saviour. Help us to rely on your promises and believe as the psalmist did in times of old when they proclaimed, I will listen to what the God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people. Lord, help us to accept the peace you give us, the peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace we have received through your Son being willing to be anchored to that tree on Calvary by those cruel nails driven through his hands and feet, causing him to suffer, bleed and die for us, giving salvation to the world. Lord, you are not an absent God. Your Spirit is with and in each and every one of us, each and every day. Thanks to Jesus' suffering, the darkest of nights, and on the third day, rising back to life, we can experience life in all its fullness. Lord, grant us today the knowledge and reassurance of your peace. Help us to focus on the anchor in the storm, the anchor that is your Son, who is always there for us. Lord, we thank you that Jesus was anchored to that tree to give us the insight that no matter how deep the darkness becomes, the light will never be extinguished. We thank you and ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
Now go in peace, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all, today and forevermore. Amen.